We'll start with prayer. Okay, I'll do it like with the kids. Hands up. Hands up. Hands up. Hands up. Jazz hands. Jazz hands. Bring them together. Bring them down. Close your eyes. Close your mouths. Bow your heads. And let's talk to God. Dear God, please help us act like responsible young men and women and be able to, to follow directions and pay attention so that we can grow through this class. Help us to, to learn about your word. Help us to be faithful in our work so that we are set for a life of fighting against Satan's temptations and, and growing in your word. In Jesus' name we pray it. Amen. Okay, so next time, next time when I say let's pray, don't just sit there going like this and everything else, okay? And that way I don't have to treat you like a little baby, okay? All right, so here we are in the class. Oh, and you want to see this, don't you? So let's go like this. We'll put... So open up your workbooks to Lesson 47, which you did at home. Did anyone not get a chance to... Do that. No. Did you do it, Bethany? Lesson 47. Gabe, did you do it? Yeah. yeah? Okay. Yes. Kristen, did you guys get 47 done? Yeah. Okay. All right. So this we had talked about last time. Uh, here we go. First Corinthians 10, 16, and 17, memory work. Who knows it? Okay, let's hear it. Uh, it's not the cup. It's not the cup. It's not the cup of Thanksgiving for which we give thanks, participation in the blood of Christ. It's not the bread that we break, participation in the body of Christ. Well, here it is. Uh, oh, but you did the Lord's Supper blessings? Yeah. Okay. What blessing to receive through this eating and drinking? Yeah. That is shown us by these words, given and poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Through these words, we receive forgiveness of sins, new life, and salvation. In this sacrament, for where there's forgiveness of sins, there's also new life and salvation. So... Uh, based on that test, most people did really badly on the memory work. Um, and I'm not surprised because we never know it. So that is something to study, to work on, because at the end you need to know it or you get to do another year. So um, review lesson. What was the review lesson about? Gabe Amerson, what did you guys, what did you learn about? Review lesson? Yep. So, well, the lesson that you went through with your parents. Oh, that one. Uh, which page was it? What? Here we go. 46. Okay. Uh, I was in, the angel had rolled, rolled the stone away. On okay. Jesus tomb. So, you were talking about what? About Jesus, what? Jesus' tomb. Okay. And was he in it? No. So what did they do? They were looking they were surprised that he wasn't in the tomb when the angel rolled away the boulder. Surprised What's the word I'm him. looking for? The what of Jesus? We celebrated on Easter. Okay. Resurrection. resurrection. So the resurrection of Jesus. And then you also talked about when he ascended up into heaven. What do we call that? Mm -hmm. The ascension, right? Um, so he, he rose from the dead, ascended. Uh, let's do those review questions to uh, um, make sure you got it. Selah, after Jesus was in the tomb for parts of three days, what happened? He rose from the dead. Excellent. So if you didn't do 47, write this in your, in your summary questions, your key questions. Why did we need Jesus to rise from the dead? Gabe Herman? To see that God accepted payment, Jesus' payment for our sins, so our sins could be forgiven. Oops, we're on the wrong page here. You guys all got that? Celia, you got your workbook? Oh, no?
Um, and you got a Bible, something to write with. All right. What would be the role of the disciples after Jesus' early work, earthly work was done? Gabe? Okay. Yep, to spread the good news about sins forgiven in Jesus. To spread the good news about sins forgiven in Jesus. All right, any questions on 47? Did you talk about that with your folks? No questions? All right. Then why do I keep turning to the wrong page here? Lesson 48. We continue with Jesus' exaltation. When it says Jesus' exaltation, what is that talking about, Christian? There are two terms that go together, his blank and his exaltation. What are those two terms? Anyone? Okay. Humiliation, Humiliation and exaltation. Um, someone define those for me. Seela, what do you... What do you Think of when you hear humiliation and exaltation. Okay. So when we talk about the humiliation of Jesus, yeah, it's talking about that time where he went through all that stuff. But technically, what we're talking about is when Jesus step down right so he he humbled himself so what is jesus he's true god right all powerful all glorious all everything right and yet he was born as a little baby that needed someone to hold him right uh that needed his diaper changed and everything else right so he became weak so he humbled himself so the humiliation of jesus technical term if you don't know this write it down the humiliation of jesus is the time that he willingly set aside the full use of his divine powers. So what is it, Jessica? Talking about power. Okay, so you should have written it down if you didn't know. So it's the, write it down. Jesus' humiliation is the time he set aside the full use of his divine powers. The time that he set aside the full use of his divine powers. So he stepped down, came down from heaven, became a human. And you think about the Apostles' Creed. Uh, he was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. Do those seem like really glorious things? No. He set aside the full use of his divine power, and then he picked it back up again. He descended into hell, and we talked about how that was part of his exaltation. Gabe Amerson, why was his descent into hell part of his exaltation? So he could defeat the devil and thus go to heaven. Okay. Yeah, he descended into hell to proclaim victory over the devil. This was his victory parade. He wasn't like suffering in hell. He already suffered on the cross during his time of humiliation. But he reclaimed his powers. He went down to hell and said, Satan, you lost. Um, and then he rose from the dead. So think through the creed. He was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, crucified, died, and was buried. Uh, he descended into hell on the third day he rose again from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and he sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, right? So those are the stages of his exaltation. Um, so today we're talking about his exaltation, and uh, Jessica, why don't you read the italics there at the top of Lesson 48? Yes. Yep. The time of Jesus' earthly ministry had drawn to a close. He had accomplished the salvation of mankind and proved his victory by the resurrection from the dead. He then entrusted his disciples, disciples. His disciples with the responsibility of spreading the good news of the forgiveness of sins and of the world. All right. So. We're going to look at what happened after Jesus rose. So last in lesson 47, you saw the resurrection. We're going to deal with some of the things that happened after the resurrection and go in through the ascension into heaven. So everybody look up John 20, starting at verse 24. Put your hand on top of your head when you have it. John 20, starting at verse 24. 
So if you don't have your Bible, one, slap yourself on the wrist for not bringing your Bible and not being ready. And two, open up your Bible. We'll go and get a Bible. Do you have a Bible about me? Why haven't you gone and gotten one yet? It's not hard, right? We can all participate. We can be part of this. Christian, do you have John 20? Starting at verse 24. Starting at verse 24. Not yet. I'm looking forward. What's that? So you read 24 and 25, Gabe Anderson, 26 and 27. Uh, no, so you, look, you, read. you just did read. No, give them a chance. Christian, go ahead with 24 and 25. You got to come off on mute. You're on mute. So go ahead with 24 and 25. Now, Thomas, one of the 12, not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him we have seen the Lord. Uh, a little bit, a little bit more with 25. 25 keeps going there. He said, I'm not getting marked in hand, but my finger where the nails are. No nails in your side, I will not believe. Okay, excellent. So, uh, why was it difficult for Thomas to believe that Jesus had actually risen from the dead? Because he hadn't seen, right? He hadn't been there when Jesus first appeared to his disciples. So, I'll put that one up there. He hadn't been there when Jesus first appeared to his disciples. In fact, Bethany, what did he what did he say he needed to see before he'd believe it? Um, did you hear that? Did you go to the gym? Mm-mm. The disciples have been there and seen that it was empty. But in, in what he just read and what you've got in your Bible there, what did he just say? What's up? No marks in his hand. Okay. I want to see that it's really him. Show me a dude with nail marks in his hands, because why would he have nail marks in his hands? Yeah, he had just been nailed to the cross, right? So there were big holes in his hands. He said, show me that, and then I'll believe it's him, right? So he wanted, he wanted to see proof. He needed to see and touch Jesus, especially his wounds. He needed to see and touch Jesus, especially his wounds. And Gabe, you're reading uh, 26 and 27. Gabe Emerson. Whenever you're done writing that, go ahead and start reading. A week later, his disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. And then he said, Thomas, Put your finger here into my hands. Reach out your hands and put into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Okay. So, when Jesus appeared to his disciples again, what did he tell Thomas to do? Okay. Touch my wounds. Why do you think he said that, Jessica? So, we Okay, because remember, Thomas said, I'm not going to believe until I see his wounds. And Jesus says, okay, touch my wounds, right? So a week later, so on one Sunday, Thomas is like, no way, it can't be true. And then Jesus is like, here I am, look at my wounds. What do you think Thomas said? Think you believe? Uh, Let's read and find out. Let's read and find out. Uh, oh, here's what, so look at him and touch him. We got that. And then who's got the next two verses? Sheila, when you're done writing, go ahead and read those. 
Okay. Did you believe Jessica? Yeah, yeah he's not learning my God. It's really you. Um, and then Jesus says, Blessed are those who haven't seen and yet have believed. Who was he talking about when he blessed those who believe even if they haven't seen? Okay. Us? Yeah. Anyone who believes in Jesus but not has not seen him physically like us. Anyone who believes in Jesus but has not seen him physically like us. So we're in lesson 48, Lily and Ethan. We just did the first part. The, the answer is up for number four. And let's see, who was paying attention? Who wants an extra point that can tell Ethan and Lily, or Ethan and Lillian, what we just talked about? Bethany, you want to try it? You sure? All right, Sheila, give them a... Excellent. Good job. Um, Bible's open to John 21 now, starting at verse 1. You got the right spot? <laughs> So that's where 21 starts. So right there's this one. Oh. Bethany, you got John 21? You read Ezekiel. Why are you reading Ezekiel? Lillian <laughs> and Ethan, open up your Bible to John 21. So it'll make more sense if you're reading right. Okay. Ezekiel 21, verse 1. Ezekiel 21. All right, and while you're getting John 21 open, we got to think about it. Agree or disagree, it would have been better for us to be Thomas because he had the proof of seeing Jesus risen from the dead. Agree or disagree, it would have been better for us to be Thomas because he had the proof of seeing Jesus risen from the dead. What do you think, Jessica? Agree or disagree? You guys online, I don't see thumbs. It would have been better for us to be Thomas and don't just look at what other people are saying. Christian, you're giving me a waffle answer. Why, why are you in the middle? Because we should already believe him even without us not seeing him. Okay. Who else wants to comment on it? Sila? Right. Well, after he saw him, he believed, right? Okay. We've seen even more than Thomas saw, right? We've got the whole Bible. We've got everything. Um, and so, yeah, it would have been really cool to see it. But Thomas also had to die a martyr's death. That probably wouldn't be too fun. Um, but we have we have how it all worked out. We you know because Thomas needed proof, Jesus gave us that proof, and it's written in the Bible. So good. It's a kind of in, in the middle one on that one. You want to read? Okay, then Jessica, read verse one of John twenty one um, as Jesus uh, does another miracle. So so. Easter Sunday, Jesus appears to the disciples. Who isn't there? Thomas. Thomas. Next week, he appears to the disciples. Who's there? Thomas. And now this is an appearance later on that we're going to be reading about. So Jessica's going to read verse 1, and then we're going to let Max, or you can read verses 1, 2, and 3, and then we'll let Max take over from there. Go ahead, Jessica. After Jesus appearing to his disciples by the sea of Galilee, it happened this way Simon Peter, Thomas, also known as Did you miss? Nathan Milk from Cana and Galilee, 
the sons of Zebedee and two other disciples were together. You good there? All right. So, what are the, what? Uh, who's all there by the Sea of Galilee? The disciples. Yep. Thomas, also known as Didymus, Nathaniel from Cana and Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two other He's disciples. Reading some. I'm going out to see. Simon Peter told them, and they said, "We'll go with you." So they went out and got into the boat. But that night they caught nothing. Early in the morning. Why, why do you think they wanted to go out to fish? For food. Okay, maybe for food. Any other reasons? Okay. They were fishermen. That's something that they liked doing, that they had grown up doing. What else? Can you imagine if you're the disciples and Sila? Well, Jesus wasn't there at the time, right? They're just hanging out there. Jesus had said, go ahead into Galilee and I'll meet you there. And they're just waiting. And day after day is going by, and they're just waiting. That's so why do you think they wanted to go fish? Because they got bored. They probably got bored, right? So yeah, it would have been good food. Maybe they like doing it, but probably they were probably getting stir crazy. They were going crazy, going, oh, when is he going to come, right? They were probably going stir crazy. <laughs> and how successful was their fishing trip? They caught nothing. They didn't catch anything. <clears throat> and then we'll let Max keep reading. Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples did not realize that he was Jesus. He called out to them, Friends, haven't you any fish? No, they answered. He said, Throw your net on the right side of the boat and you'll find some. When they did, they were unable to haul the net in because of the large number of fish. Then the disciples whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. As soon as Simon Peter heard him say, It is the Lord, he wrapped his outer garment around him, for he had taken it off, and jumped into the water. The other disciples followed in the boat, towing the net full of fish, but they were not far from shore, about a hundred yards. When they landed, they saw a fire of burning coals there with fish on it and some bread. Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish you have caught. So Simon Peter climbed back into the boat and dragged the net ashore. It was full of large fish, 153. But even with so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them. All right. So they're fishing all night. They're professional fishermen. They don't catch anything. Some guy says, oh, put your nets on the other side. Hmm, really? We're professional fishermen, right? But it was Jesus, so they did it. And what happened? They caught 153. Yes, 153 fish. They caught a huge number of fish, 153. They caught a huge number of fish, 153. What would you call that, Ethan? They didn't catch any fish all night, and then Jesus says, throw your net on the other side, and they catch 153. Is that just good luck? A miracle. Yes, that's a miracle. Excellent. <laughs> Jesus had done something like this before. Do you remember when? Dave? Uh, when he was preaching out in the water, and then he to prove to Peter. <laughs> so this was before the preaching thing. This was before the preaching thing. William? Well, so he fed a lot of people with just a couple of fish, but there was another time where there was the big catch of fish right before Jesus called his disciples. He showed them who he was by calling out, saying, hey, uh, try it the other side. And all of a sudden they caught all these fish and then they come in and he starts teaching them. Um, so it's kind of in with the teaching, but it was, it was during the, when he was calling the disciples. So when he called many of his disciples to full-time work, when he originally called many of his disciples to full-time work. <laughs> How do you think John recognized that that was Jesus? All that way away, they're in the water, he's on the shore. 
would probably be kind of hard to see, Gabe. Okay. Because he performed a miracle. Yeah, because he performed a miracle, right? Probably reminded him of uh, um, the one that he had seen before, right? The repeat miracle made it clear who Jesus was. <laughs> Can I do number 10? Wait. You want to answer number 10? No, I'm not answer it. <clears throat> well, you can probably tell me what happened in Matthew 26, 69 to 74. That was when Peter was in the high priest's courtyard and a servant girl came up to him and said, oh, you're a Galilean. Are you one of Jesus' followers? Do you remember what he said? No. What did Peter say? He said no. And then someone else comes up. Oh, surely your you know your accent gives you away. And he said, "I'm not one of those followers. I've never met the guy, right?" And then someone was like, "Oh yeah, you are. You were with them. I saw you." And and then he said, <laughs> "Right." He used bad words. He called down curses, saying, "I've never met the guy. I have anything to do with the guy, right?" Um, and then the rooster crowed. And what did that have to do with anything? Okay. He said he uh, persecuted me three times. Okay, you're going to deny me three times before the rooster crows. Uh, and so that reminded him of Jesus, Jesus' promise. Emma, hello. Welcome. We are on page 184. We are talking, we're on number 10. Um, <clears throat> so uh, before we get to that, though, let's read the rest what verse are we on in john 21 what verse are we on in john 21 12 yes we're on 12 john 21 verse 12 so here goes max taking us 12 to 17 come and have breakfast none of the disciples dared ask him who are you they knew it was the lord jesus came took the bread and gave it to them, and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time Jesus appeared to his disciples after he was raised from the dead. When they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said, you know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, you love me. He answered, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, Take care of my feet. The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, you love me. He was hurt because he was asking him the third time, You love me. He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, Be my sheep. What question did Jesus ask? Do you love me? How many times did he ask it? Three times. What did Peter answer? Yeah, you know I do, right? So he said yes. And each time he said yes, what did Jesus tell him to do? Feed his sheep, feed his lambs, feed his sheep, right? Taking care of those that, that Jesus was giving him. So now think about that in light of what we just talked about. In the high priest's courtyard, what did Peter do? He denied Jesus how many times? Three. So now Jesus calls Peter over to have a special conversation with him. And what does he ask him? Do you, Do you love me? So Jesus, get, Peter gets to say, I love you how many times? Three. Three. And does Jesus say, I don't believe you get out of my face? No. What does he tell him to do? Yeah. So Jesus is the good shepherd, right? Who are his sheep? We are, right? What? Jesus was giving him a really important job, right? If you didn't trust someone, would you give him a really important job? If you were mad at someone, would you, would you give them something that is most precious to you? So what was Jesus telling Peter? Take care of us. Take care of us. And, and what was that showing, Peter? Yeah, that, that he, he loves him, cares him. Um, so the question, though, what had he done before Jesus died that needed to be addressed? Three times he had denied even knowing Jesus. I got ahead of myself. We didn't write all these down. So three times. <clears throat> Don't worry about it. Uh, 
No, we got class. We're teaching. I'm teaching. All right, so three times he had denied even knowing Jesus. The first two times that Jesus asked Peter if he loved him, Jesus used a special word that means selflessly love someone else, agapaho. Peter answered with a lesser term, meaning that he cares for someone like a dear friend. Why do you think Peter was unwilling to say that he selflessly loved Jesus? Yeah, because he had denied him. He felt he couldn't claim that he selflessly loved him because he had been selfish in that instance, right? the third time jesus asked peter if peter loved him jesus borrowed peter's words in verse 17 jesus essentially asked peter do you really care for me like a dear friend why do you think peter was hurt when jesus asked him that do you like okay you know, he, he knew what he did wrong. It implied doubt that Peter meant what he said. But at the end of each of these exchanges, what did Jesus tell Peter to do, Jessica? Take care of his sheep. Yep, take care of Jesus' sheep. Take care of Jesus' sheep. You got this one down? All right. Jesus didn't own any animals. He was talking about people. What did he want Peter to understand? <laughs> what do you think, Ethan? What did he want Peter to understand when he said, take care of my sheep? How? Keep him in the faith. Okay. Yeah. Jesus had work for Peter to do. He would feed people of the world with the good news from God's word. He would feed people of the world with the good news from God's word. Jesus had work for Peter to do. He would feed people of the world with the good news from God's word. Jesus had work for Peter to do. He would feed people of the world with the good news from God's word. You got that one? All right. Let's think about it. Evaluate this statement. Giving us work to do is the best way Jesus shows us what he has done for us. What do you think? Giving us work to do for him is the best way Jesus shows us what he's done for us. Okay. Why do you say yeah? Because um, what does it show? That Jesus is trying to teach us how to work. Okay. So giving us an important responsibility means that he what? Loves us. That he loves us and he wants us to be part of all of that. So that's good. Do you all agree? Is it the best way that Jesus shows us what he's done for us? No, why not? Okay. And how does he show us that? Okay, so he gives us his word is probably the best way, but giving us work gets us in the Bible, right? If our work is to share the Bible with others, that helps us get in the Bible. So we could we could look at this both ways, right? That it's a it's an important part of getting us in the Bible to show us what he has done for us. Sound good? <clears throat> Acts 1, 1 to 11. So you might not even have to turn a page. It might be on the just flip side, or it might be one page further after John 21 is Acts 1. <clears throat> and we're going to see Jesus commissioning his disciples and ascending into heaven. <clears throat> he commissions his disciples and ascends into heaven. <clears throat> Everybody got it? Read verse 1. Just, one. just verse 1. Yep. In my former book, the office, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and to teach. Before. All right. To do and to teach. What is the next word? I stand for this. 
That is the end of verse? Oh, it's in the middle. Okay. Uh, Bethany, verse two. So be ready to just go right to the next verse. Emma, verse two. Verse three, Bethany. Lillian, verse three. After his suffering, he proceeded with the Presented himself to, to them and gave him gave many convincing proof that he was alive. He he approached. He appeared. He appeared to them over a period of forty days and spoke about his about the kingdom of God. For Sheila. He said five. For John baptized with water, but in, in, in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Gabe six. So when they met together, they asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom of Israel? Gabe Emerson seven. Are we just going to read? Bethany, are you ready? He said to them, It's not for you to know the times you make, but they have set in our authority. Christian? Christian? It's eight, right? Eight, yep. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witness in Jerusalem, and all Judah and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Okay, awesome. So, during the 40 days after his resurrection from the dead, what did Jesus do for his disciples? So there's a couple of things in here. What did he do? Gathered. Okay, so when they were gathered, what did he do? Did he leave them alone? What did he do? Someone. First, door the kingdom to Israel. Well, he taught him about that, but first, what did he do? Before he started talking to him, he wrote. What did you say, Lily? Yeah, he showed himself, right? He he proved that he was alive. He appeared to them. He proved he was alive. And then and he, like Jessica said, he taught them about the kingdom of heaven. And what else did he do? So he appeared and showed he was alive. He taught him about the kingdom of heaven, and he power. He says, you're going to receive power to do what? When the Holy Spirit comes to you. That's when you receive the power. He's going to give him the power of the Holy Spirit to do what? Sila? Well, that's not witnesses. what he says here. To be his witnesses, right? What's a witness? Someone who sees something and tells about it, right? So what does it mean to be Jesus' witness, Bethany? If a witness is someone who tells about it, what, what does it mean to be his witness? He said that he said to the disciples and us, we're going to be his witnesses. What does that mean? We just said a witness is someone who sees something and tells people about it. If we're Jesus' witness, what do we do? We Tell people about it. There you go. So here we go. He proved he was alive and told them about his kingdom. He proved he was alive and told them about his kingdom. <clears throat> now look at verse four to answer this question. Though the disciples didn't realize it, Jesus would soon leave them. What instructions did he give them? Do it. Don't leave Jerusalem, right? They were not to leave Jerusalem. Because you were about to answer the next question.
And what was the gift? With what? The Holy Spirit. So God was going to send him the Holy Spirit. So they were, they were not to leave Jerusalem. And what did he promise them? The Holy Spirit would come on them with power. The Holy Spirit would come on them with power. <laughs> And then look ahead to verse 8 that we already read to see the answer to the next one. So the Holy Spirit would come on them with power. What impact would that have on their lives? They get the gift of the Holy Spirit, which would make them what? Emma? Powerful to be what, Emma? Witnesses. They would be empowered to be Jesus' witnesses in the world. They would be empowered to be Jesus' witnesses in the world. <laughs> Gabe Herman, will you look up Matthew 8, 28, 18 to 20? Matthew records one of the things that Jesus said while he was during those 40 days. And Gabe's going to read that for us. And we'll see how, and some of you guys already started answering this, we'll see how um, the disciples would carry out the work of being Jesus' witnesses. If you hear Dave start reading, and you know it, and you speak it out loud with Dave the rest of the way, um, I have a prize for you. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I command you. And surely I am with you always, to the very end of the age. Did you get it? Well, Gabe was saying it to be good one. And I heard you guys say at least some of the words. And Bethany and Jessica, if you memorize it by next week, you get that, all right? Oh, hey, Charlie. Um, so, Charlie and Lyra, remember, we're starting at 6 during Lent. So, we are uh, on number 19 on page 185. On number 19, we're in uh, Acts 1. So, how would the disciples carry out the work of being Jesus' witnesses? Okay. Jesus said baptizing. William said teaching other people. They would baptize and teach people everything. They baptize and teach people everything Jesus had said. They would baptize and teach people everything Jesus had said. And Lyra and Charlie, um, tomorrow you can go online and watch the first part of this lesson to catch up on what you missed. Okay. And if you can't find it, text Vicar. Uh, but it should be up tomorrow. The recording should be up. But we'll we'll finish off here. We're gonna we're gonna go up to the time for the service, and then we're gonna pause, go into the church. So you guys that are online, make sure that you go to stream.abidinggrace.com, watch the service, and as soon as it's done, come back to this Zoom link, and we'll finish up the rest of class. Okay. So 19, uh, he'd carry out, they'd baptize and teach people everything Jesus had said. 20. What comfort did the disciples have even though they wouldn't be able to see Jesus anymore? Sila? Okay, that's true. I mean, they had God's word. They had the Old Testament and they had the, the message that Jesus had given them and they would be the ones that would write a lot of the New Testament. Um, but what in that passage that Gabe just read and some of you recited, what did he give them? What comfort did he give them? Even though they wouldn't be able to see him, what did he say? Remember, he said, all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, teaching them to do everything I've commanded you. And surely, Emma, I am with you always to the very end of the age. So what did Jesus promise them? He would always be with them. He would always be with them. <laughs> Charlie and Lyra, we are on Acts 1, verse 9. Charlie, you can read verse 9. Lyra, you can read verse 10. And um, Gabe Emerson, why don't you take 11? 
Acts 1, verses 9, 10, and 11. So go ahead, Charlie. Come off a of mute. Huh? Acts 1, verse 9. Read that. I also, also got to pull it up. Okay. Lyra, do you have it? Okay, find it. Gabe, do you have it? So Gabe, read 9, Charlie 10, Lyra 11. Okay, that was really quiet in here, so I'll, I'll read it out here all again. After he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes, and a cloud hid him from their sight. And then Charlie, Acts 1, verse 10. Um, Acts what? Acts 1, verse 10. They were looking intentionally up up into the sky as he was going when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside him. And 11? Oh, and 11. Lyra? Are we in the Bible? Yeah, Acts 1, verse 11. You want me to read it? Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? The same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. So after Jesus was done speaking, what happened to him, Ethan? He was covered by a cloud. Okay, yeah, he ascended into heaven and was hidden by a cloud. He ascended into heaven and was hidden by a cloud. <laughs> And they're looking up there and they can't see him anymore. And all of a sudden, who's there? All of a sudden, who's there? Uh, two white. Yeah, two people in white. Who are they? Angels. So two angels are there. And what promise does God give through the angels? He'll be coming back. Yeah, you'll see him coming back on the clouds, right? Jesus will return the same way he left. Jesus will return the same way he left. You guys want to get some soup? Yeah. All right. So we will take a break. Remember, those of you online, go to stream.abidinggrace.com. Watch the service because we're going to hear about Peter's denial in this. And then come back after the service and we'll take another 10 minutes and go through the rest of the lesson. Okay.